So when you're on location, what are the, some of the things you can take with you? As I said, a reflector. This could be some kind of silver reflector or just even white styrofoam. And this can make the light direction helpful in the right direction. You can have LED lights. You can also, of course, you need to take your camera. But the camera is the dangerous part. It's so easy when you're on location to make a mistake and drop the camera fall down, have the camera fall over, take the camera out of the bag, hand it to someone, and they go whoops, and they drop the camera, and game over again. You know, I've seen it so many times. So you need to really pay attention. Which parts of this equipment are valuable, and which parts are easy to be broken, and be extra careful, extra, extra careful, and that includes two main things, your camera and your microphone. These are the two things that are so easy to be broken, just one drop, and that's it. So camera and microphone, you've got to be careful about that. Now usually you're gonna put the camera on a tripod and you're gonna put the microphone on some kind of boom or some kind of stand. So make sure that they're strong and that they're secure and all the mechanisms are locked correctly. All the screws are tightened and nothing's gonna fall over. I've seen it many times, somebody sets up a stand with a microphone, and then 10 minutes later, it's slowly, slowly, slowly falling over, and boom, it falls down, microphone hits right on the ground, and nobody noticed until it was too late. I've seen it so many times, so watch out, make sure your stands are secure. That's why I like using the sandbags, which I'll show you in a second. Let's take a look at this classroom here. I want to show you an example. So we went out on location. This was, we had a guest speaker and they're going to talk and then students are going to make a presentation. So in this final part of the class, students will come up in groups, make a presentation in the front of the room. Now the normal way that someone would record this, the normal way they always do it, students and teachers and everyone always does this, is they go ahead and they take the camera they put it on a tripod, then they move the tripod to the back of the room. So if you look at this picture here, the front of the room is up here. This is the front. Up here is a little stage, and then behind that stage up here is a, is a projection. Here's a computer where people are gonna put their PowerPoint presentations. And then back here is the back of the room, and you can see there. So the normal way that someone would film this or video record would be put their tripod down here and have the camera facing this way. That would be the normal way. That's the way we see all of the time. That's not the way I would do it, but that's the way it's normal. So I'll cover that in a second. So when you're on location, what are some of the things you need to watch out for, be aware of? Of course, you're going to be video recording, so you need to be aware of what are you recording to. You're not gonna be using a PC in a lab. You're gonna be on location, so how are you recording? Are you recording to an SD card, to a hard disk, to tape, I guess, is still possible if you have an old enough machine. So how are you recording? And then you need to be careful. Are those things I have, like an SD card, empty? Is there enough space in it for me to record? Uh, am I going to be able to take it out and put in a second one? Usually if you record enough, you can take one out, make sure it's safe, you can test it, put in a second one while you're testing the first one, just to be sure, so you don't lose anything. You need to make sure you understand that and that you have that material. The next thing is your audio. How are you going to record your audio? And as I've said many, many times, the audio is really the key part to the whole process. It's easy to think, oh, record the audio, just uh, turn on the camera, record the audio. No, that's not going to work. You need to have a microphone. You need to have something that's going to be sensitive. You need to get the audio clear. How are you going to do that? And what are you going to record it onto? An SD card or onto something else? Also, I think it's very helpful to have an audio mixer for the same reason. If you're going to be recording and you have a little audio mixer with you, you can really get your audio clear. And that includes you need to have headphones to listen to it. And we've talked about this in a previous lesson.
Now when you go on location, of course, you have to have a camera. Now in our studio, in our lab, we allow students to use these small consumer cameras. And when I say consumer cameras, what I mean are cameras that are not super expensive. They're not the same as the cameras we use in the studio, which are big, expensive cameras. These are cheaper cameras. They're still not cheap. They're still a little bit expensive and good quality, but they're smaller and easier to handle, and they don't have so many special features. So they do a lot more on automatic, which is good when you're on location because you don't have time to set all of the details. So their automatic settings usually work pretty good. So we call these consumer level cameras. This is a Sony, and I think the brand is called Handycam. So all of their consumer ones are called Handycam. Of course, you're gonna to need to have tripods or monopods. We've talked about this before. Otherwise, you cannot get a steady shot. You're going to need some kind of microphone, and that could be wireless. The only problem with wireless is that wireless requires something I already talked about, and that was batteries. And what's the one thing that always causes trouble? Batteries. You put the batteries in, they go dead, what do you do? So you can use microphones, but then you have to set up your microphone correctly to get the sound good. And I'll show you an example of that in a minute. And then, of course, a portable mixer is something I really appreciate on location as a big help. Okay, so here is the example again. We're back in the classroom, the same classroom. The students are about to give their presentation. You can see the projector up there, right, the screen. So that's the front of the classroom is up there. The back of the classroom is where we are now with this camera. And you can see we've set up the camera. This is the Handycam. And it's shooting right up to the front of the classroom. Okay, so that looks like, hey, uh, uh, everything so far so good. This is pretty normal. I think this is what most people would set up. This is what most people would do. Put the camera in the back of the room, facing to the front, and uh, you kind of feel like the audience, right? Also, we have a microphone here, a shotgun mic. Now that should be pretty good because a shotgun mic can pick up the sound straight ahead and far away. So that should work. And the audio line, the XLR line, is going into this machine here, and this is the mixer. Again, all of these devices we've talked about in other videos. In the mixer, I showed that many episodes ago. You can go look at that again. Very handy device to have with you on location. So we've got the mixer here and we put in our line out into the mixer and then we can get a readout here and we can use headphones or earphones to listen to the sound so we can hear what it is. Now, my question is about this location of the camera. Is this really the best location? It's normal, it's what people usually do. So when you go on location, my advice is don't just do what people always do. Maybe you should think about it first. Is this really the best place for the camera? This is what everybody does. It's normal, but is it best? In this example, I don't think it's best. And why is it not best? Because we're so far away from the front where the subjects are gonna be. Who are we going to record? We're going to record the students up there talking, okay? We would also sometimes like to see the audience or the judges. The judges are going to be sitting here. So how can we see them? Because right now we can only see them from the back. We cannot see them from the front. And also we're so far away. How are we going to get a good picture? Also, how are we going to get good audio? We're so far away. So. I'm just saying, let's think about this. Is this really best? So what you do is, when you're on location is, you go ahead and you walk around the location. You can look around and see, are there different places that I can shoot my video at? Is there maybe something different? Now here's an example of the wireless microphones or lavalier mics. We talked about these in another episode. Uh, they're very handy to take with you and we have different brands. Here's a Sony brand and a Shure brand. Neither of these are cheap. You can buy cheap ones. You can get very cheap ones at some 
audio stores or computer supply stores even, and they work, but sometimes their quality is not that good. But the good thing is if they break, you didn't waste a lot of money. These professionals can be very expensive. So be careful if you borrow these, make sure you don't lose anything, and especially sensitive is the microphone that's at the end of the line that the person is speaking into. If you pull too hard, if you drop it, if you pull it when you're taking it off of your shirt, it will break it. And it's very easy to break, very delicate. So in our case, for the shoot we went on this day, we decided to not use radio uh, lavalier mics, wireless. We decided to use a shotgun mic just because it's more reliable and for sure nothing can go wrong. And we know that it has power because we hook it up to our mixer, which gives it power. Right, what do we got here? Well, I think you all know what this is. This is a reflector. It goes inside your car to stop your car from heating up when you park it from the sunlight. Now, why do I show this to you? Because something like this is cheap, easy to buy, and what can you use it for? You can use it as a reflector outside. So when you go outside on location shooting, you probably do not take a lot of lights. You already have the sunlight. But the sunlight may not be in the exact right position, so you can use this light to reflect the light onto your actors, onto your talent, or onto your subject in a way that gets light up onto their face or on the side of their face or something like that. So cheap, easy, can buy it at any store, any hardware store has those. So a reflector.